Imagine stepping out of a spacecraft after a six-day journey onto a dusty world untouched for billions of years. The ground beneath you isn't soil, it's lunar regolith, sharp, grey, ancient. The gravity is one-sixth of Earth's, each step feels light, yet strange. This isn't science fiction, this is the true story of day one, our first day of building a new home on the moon. Four astronauts, a pair of engineers, a geologist, and a medical officer land near Moon's South Pole on a ridge that sunlight never stops. Here, temperatures vary around minus 50 to 10 degrees, the perfect temperature for minimizing the wear on equipment. The first task, deploy the inflatable habitat. It's been waiting, prepositioned. The team uses robotic arms to cover it into two meters of lunar soil, natural protection against deadly cosmic radiation. On the surface, radiation can reach 0.4 MSV per day, 20 times higher than on Earth. But instead, shielded by regolith, it drops below 0.1 MSV. Power comes next. The crew activates a solar array deployment robot Panels unfold like wings, absorbing 10 kW of energy, stored in 100 kW lithium-ion batteries. These batteries will sustain life during the two lunar nights each month, lasting a staggering 354 hours. Life support system wear to life, water brought from Earth, 1k kg of it. it splits into hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen in compressed and stored, uses to maintain ca cabin air at 0.7 atmosphere with a breathable 80 to 20 mix of oxygen and nitrogen. Ammonia-based thermal exchangers regulate internal temperature, holding it steady at 20-25 degrees. Meals comes in freeze-dried pouches. 3k calories per person per day plus vitamin d supplements for the sun their skin will never directly thin after a few days astronauts having a live broadcast we walked on a place where humans haven't been for 50 years and we are not just visiting we are staying the regular processing unit is online beginning its first test, extracting oxygen from lunar soil using hydrogen reduction. For every ton of regolith, it can yield 300 grams of oxygen. The team sets up the mobile exploration rover, a six-wheeled pressurized vehicle with a 150 km range. Now the moon is open for exploration. Each day, they conduct EVAs, extravehicular activities, for five to six hours. The geologist gathers rocks as old as 3.8 billion years. Engineers test seals and brushes to fight back the razor-sharp lunar dust. Solar panels are cleaned using electrostatic tech, ensuring maximum energy absorption. Radiation remains a constant concern. By the end of week two, personal dosimeters show 14 MSW MSV of exposure well within NASA's 250 MSV carrier limit, but a reminder of the environment harshness. Psychological support matters too. Weekly videos calls with psychologists help, as do small joys, cards, music, and lunar yoga sessions inside the habitat. In week three, a small greenhouse arrives inside its five meter square volume. Hydroponic trays growing lettuce, kale, and dwarf wheat with especially tuned LED lights emitting peak photosynthetic wavelengths 450 to 660 nanometer. Plants begin to thrive. By day 28, they taste the first harvest 150 grams of fresh greens per crew per week. A taste of earth on a foreign world. But this is just the beginning. In the next episode, new arrivals, the base expands, new 3D printed lunar buildings, and batteries made of lunar soil. Subscribe and join us because the lunar civilization has just begun.